So you have built a multi-tenant application, but now you are stuck. How do you manage tenant-specific app settings? How do you register a new tenant? And how can you easily switch between multiple connection strings for different database per tenant? In this video, I will show you how to solve these challenges using Azure App Configuration Store. So let's begin. Let me show you what I prepared in the code. So I have an API project and I have a class library multi-tenancy project where I have a tenancy middleware when injecting a request from an API, we are checking if that tenant code is present in the header. If not, we are return 500 and the tenant is missing with doing some validation. For the simplicity of this video, I'm using the tenant code from the header. But yeah, you can use JWT token, cookie or from custom domain or from the URL. I'm using a tenancy manager to validate if the tenant is registered or not. And I'm using iTenant setter and iTenant. If we go to the tenant.cs file, we have a tenant class. We have iTenant that contain only a get properties and iTenant setter that is being used for setting the tenant from the middleware. And you can inject iTenant to get the code or the ID. And we have an extension method, add multi-tenancy that is register all the needed interfaces and classes same thing for the use multi-tenancy that where we are registering the middleware okay and in the code basically i'm having a reference between the api and the class library and i have called the add multi-tenancy i also have database connection here so we have a to-do database we have to do db context i'm doing ensure created here for simplicity only and we have only one one entity one class which is to do item that we are going through it in a bit and I also created to-do endpoints where if you go to the file here, just for organizing things, it's in a separate class where I'm mapping the endpoints map get to get the list, to get an item or to create a to-do item. I also added an endpoint where I'm injecting iTenant to get the tenant code on the root. So if we are on the project and we go to Postman, if we request the API, we are going to get 500 internal server error with tenant is missing. But if we go to the header and we add tenant code, let's say client one, we can return hello client one. The first thing that we need to do is to configure our application to connect to Azure App Configuration Store. But let's first create that store in Azure. So go to Azure, create app configuration, select the resource group, location, specify the name, and I'm going to use the free tier. Keep everything as it is and let's create. Make sure to subscribe, give me a like and subscribe to my mailing list. It's in the description. Once created, let's go and grab the connection string. Go to settings, access settings and copy the connection string. Now let's go back to Rider and first we need to add the new get package for the Azure app configuration, Microsoft.Azure.AppConfiguration.ASP.NET Core. Let's add that to the API project. Install. Once installed, let's configure the app to use the app configuration store. So builder.configuration.add Azure app configuration. And we need the connection string. So for the connection string, we can do builder.configuration.getConnectionString app configuration let's go here and let's add app configuration and we paste the connection string and now this is enough for our app to be connected to azure app configuration let's add also builder.services.add azure app configuration and we can also use it here app.use azure app configuration okay so now we are connected to Azure App Configuration. Let's go back to Azure to create our first secret. So go back here, Operations, Configuration Explorer. So App Configuration can be used for shared configuration across multiple tenants, or we can create configuration per a tenant. So a key value pair for a tenant. And the way to do that is either by having a prefix in the key or using label. For this demo, I'm going to use the prefix, the client code in the key. So let's create a new key value. So client one dash website, and let's say our first tenant is client one.com apply. We can have another one for client two website, same key, different prefix for different tenant. And the value is client two.com apply. And now let's go back to the code 
and I'm going to create a new class here called tenant settings. Let's create first an interface so we can inject the interface, not the class. So public interface i tenant settings, and we can have a string, a nullable string, get value string key. And let's implement the interface here i tenant settings. So the idea is we can inject i tenant interface and the i configuration so we can get settings for each tenant. So private read only i tenant tenant inject that from the constructor and another one for i configuration and also inject it from the constructor initialize it from the constructor and here in our get value we simply need to do something like this return configuration tenant.code key that should be enough to now return every tenant the key related to it so to test that let's go to the program.cs and create a new endpoint so I'm going to do app.map get tenant config, let's call it. And we can inject the i tenant settings and we can return a new JSON website equal to settings dot get value website. And we can return tenant equal to also inject i tenant. So we can also use tenant.code and return that. But first, yeah, let's make it an expression. Perfect. And here, let's register our iTenant settings. So go to add multi-tenancy extension method and let's add that. So service.addscope iTenant settings, tenant settings. And now let's run the code, go back to Postman and let's test using that tenant code in the header, tenant config. If we run it, we are getting the website of our tenant. Let's change the tenant to client2 and we can get the website of tenant2. So now we have configuration depending on that tenant itself. So now let's talk about how to configure our application to use multiple databases per tenant. So every tenant has his own connection string and its own database. Because we configured Azure app configuration to use a key prefix, we can now start having a connection string for every tenant. So we can create client one, connection string, connection strings, default connection and let's save the local connection string let me change that database name to the tenant name so client one this is the first one apply and we can create another one client two dash connection strings that default connection so connection string is a secret don't use it the way that I'm doing it here because you can view it. It's not encrypted. It's not secure. But you can, using app configuration, you can connect to a Azure Key Vault and use Key Vault as a reference here. Okay? But that's a topic for another video. For now, it's fine. For this demo, we can use connection string as is in a, in a key pair here. Let's go back to the code. I'm going to change something in our tenant settings. I'm going to add a new method, get connection string string connection string and here we can implement that connection string and similar thing we can return get value of connection strings the parameter connection string so now i can go back we can now remove this connection string from here and we can now start configuring our db context to use the connection string from the tenant settings once we resolve the instance so first Let's go to our extension here and stop getting the connection string from the default connection string here. Let's remove that. Let's only use SQL Server. And let's go to the context. And now we can do a few things here. Let me remove the ensure created. Our database is already created. And yeah, we can start by injecting the I tenant settings. Inject the settings. And we can override on configuring method. So option builder dot use SQL server. And you can specify the connection string, which is default connection. I'm going to change something here in the implementation to simply get value, have it to be lower invariant. So now we can make it like this, regardless of how it's been written here. It's always been lower in the app configuration. So now we can get the connection string per tenant and here in our context on configuring we are getting the connection string and we are configuring it depending on the tenant settings and let's test our endpoint so let's run the code go to postman so we have let's 
try client one. We have a database, it's connected, and let's try to create a new to do. So unplug the cable from client one created and now let's do client two this is a client two item create notice here it's id one so if we go here let's get client one to do's we have only one and let's get client two to do's and it's a different one so now we are connecting to different database depending on the tenant cool now for the fun part let's try to register a new tenant so you notice here in our tenancy code in our tenancy manager i'm getting all the tenants statically in the code like here but since we are connected to azure app configuration i can get the list of tenants from azure using some configuration so i can go here and create a new key value let's call it registered tenants so i can go here and put id point one comma so this is a tenant ID, this is a tenant code. Separate them with a comma two, client two, let's apply. Okay, now I can go back here and first thing, let's inject the I configuration. So anywhere in your code now, if you inject I configuration, you are using whatever configuration you are setting in the app configuration in Azure. So inject I configuration and let's change this code to be configuration of registered tenants make it a constant so we can use it without messing things up so get the value split on a comma let's put that in a variable so var tenants equal configuration register tenant let's assume that we always have registered tenant if it's not there it will fail and then we can loop through the tenants so tenants var tenant object equal to tenant dot split on our separator so now we have an object which is the id and the client one and we can check if tenant object of one which is the tenant name equal equal to tenant name well let's do dot equals tenant name with ignore case so if it is equal return new tenant with id equal to tenant object zero and dot parse with the code is the tenant object of one and if it's not there we can return null okay now let's test our code let's go back to tenant config send we are we are receiving our tenant so basically our code here our tenancy manager is validating and getting that second tenant and we can go back here, create a new tenant. So edit basically by doing three client three. So this is very naive way to configure a tenant. You can use a JSON, you can create like an array of JSON, but for now it's fine. Like for the sake of this demo, it's fine to have it as a string and we split it everywhere. But in a real life scenario, create a JSON document, put it there and start configuring things depending on what settings do you want. So let's add a client three and I'm going to add a website so we can use the, the endpoint tenant configuration. So client three is me. I'm client three. Apply. It's been added. Now I'm still running the app. It needs a few seconds to refresh. Basically, it needs 30 seconds to, to apply the settings on the code. Let's go to Postman. Change the tenant code to three. Tenant is not registered. Let's wait a bit, but it will not be there. And the reason is we didn't specify here in our program.cs. We didn't configure our Azure app configuration to actually check the refresh policy for that key. So let's change a few things here. Let's replace that with an option. Let's say option.connect to the connection string dot configure refresh, refresh option, refresh options dot register. So this is a key, register tenants and specify refresh all to true. And we can set the cache expiration to, let's say, one seconds in our case, where you should not put it as one seconds in production because you are going to exceed your limit. If you are using a free or a standard version, you have a limit, so don't exceed that. But for this demo, one seconds is enough. Let's run, but since client three is now loaded, 
Now I can go to Postman Run. We have client three. Let me add another client as well. So go to register tenants here. Let's add a new one. So four is Ahmed Book. Apply. And I'm going to add a new Ahmed Book website. So now we can have correct website for my new tenant. Make sure to subscribe to my mailing list. Apply. And now go back to Postman. Let's check here. A few seconds. Send. You'll notice here we got the new configuration. So our tenant, Amit Book in that case, is being registered automatically. And you notice here from the log, we have settings has been updated. The configuration has been reloaded. So now I can add a connection string. I can add whatever settings that I need here and I can register a new tenant easily. And if you want to learn more about Azure app configuration, check my other videos regarding feature flags.